Today, what I'm going to do is tell you about one of my hobbies, travelingsalesman.mobi. It all started about two years ago when a friend of mine, Christopher, he went off uh, around the Nordics. He took a Land Rover and drove around the Nordics, visiting all 30 Nordic cities that have a computer science department, because he wanted to discover and document tech entrepreneurship. I joined him for the back end of his little tour in Sweden and then down through Finland, and it's a lot of fun. The first part of the tour, I was mostly sending emails trying to get people to meet with him. It's all documented on the blog. This last summer, t summer 2011, Alto Entrepreneurship Society had their Summer of Startups program, and at their demo day, their big party to celebrate, they had a lot of these little portable saunas and these palio. And we were sitting there with uh, a glass of, I think it was cola, could have been Fanta, and we were saying, wouldn't it be great to take these to La Web, the largest entrepreneurship conference in Europe? I said, yes, this would be great, let's do this. So we talked about it, and we said, yes, when are we going to do this? And we met, and we said, yes, when are we going to do this? And it never much happened. And with about two days, sorry, two weeks before the last date we could reasonably launch ourselves across Europe, I contacted a few people, and some of them said, yes, we'll pay for this. Not all of it, but some. And some was about the ferry fare and almost the diesel to get to Paris. And I thought, nah, what the hell, let's do it. So I booked the ferry tickets, loaded the, the back of the Land Rover up with, well, actually, these are the supplies that they gave us, and then I ran into the first problem. The sauna we were planning to take, which was a Skipperly sauna, the Skipperly guy says, uh, sorry, we don't loan it for that long. Plus, the wheels aren't very good. Oh, no. Luckily, in Finland, any time three people with the same interest meet, they form a society. So there's a society for people who build saunas on trailers. And they have a website. So I was able to crawl the website and find the contact details and start phoning people. No, our sauna's been locked up for the winter. No. Sounds interesting. Wonder, if I can help you, I'll let you know. You should contact these people. Contact the, and eventually, we found somebody who said yes. Those guys were palosauna.net. They have this sauna here. It's six meters long, three and a half meters high, 2.7 wide, and 1.7 tons before you start putting water and wood in it. It's big. Very big. It's bigger than the Land Rover, and that's already a big car. So that started to get expensive, so we're already burning our budget. What the hey? Let's try this. On to the ferry. I don't know if you remember early December last year. Unfortunately, there was a storm that weekend. I found out I'm seasick. That first night wasn't a lot of fun. Um, Really not a lot of fun. The waves were cresting over the top of the boat, which was like 12 stories. It was not a lot of fun. But then I got to Germany, and we got to the autobahns. And when you have four tons rolling down the highway, it doesn't go quickly. I was getting overtaken by lorries. So it was quite a restful drive. Um, and luckily, the Land Rover has low gears. Because the other thing they don't tell you about Germany is they have both the fastest and the slowest roads. So I was either doing 80 kilometers an hour, which is about what we could do flat out, or I was doing 12. That's second gear low, which was fun. You may be able to see here that there's a miss, something missing off the Land Rover. It's a wing mirror. I lost it. I'm driving through a set of roadworks, and I look across, and I think, no, yeah, I'll need to adjust that. Why is it adjusting its... Oh, no, it's falling off, and there's nowhere to pull over. Oh, oh, 100 meters to go before I could pull over. It fell off. First casualty of the trip. So I arrive at Paris. Technically, Chantilly. Little, bit, little village just north of Paris. I don't know if you've tried this, but couch surfing. Marvelous organization of people, brilliant idea. I'd joined a few years ago, never done much with it, but now we were up against it. No budget, 
Couch surfing, you can stay on people's couches, as the name suggests. It's an amazing experience. It's just like staying at your friend's place, except you're staying at some random stranger who you've only exchanged a couple of emails with. Really, really awesome people. This is Bertrand, Frenchman, who said, yes, you can come and sleep on my couch. It literally was his couch. Super comfy couch. Showing me Chandelier Castle. Really, really pretty castle. Some sort of horsey thing. Very, very French. So, I'm in north of Paris. It's the day before the web. And I think, what should I do now? I know. Let's take the sauna to the conference venue, because Paris traffic apparently is not that pleasant. You know, many of you may have driven in Helsinki. Paris is a different type of driving. So I was very glad I took it the night before, because the sauna and the Land Rover are not the most maneuverable things. This is an average French car. The Land Rover didn't do that, by the way. Um, that's the good thing about driving a Defender in, in Paris. Low gear, just keep moving forward, and you may get the odd sort of But you, you know, eventually you'll make it through. Um, yeah, Paris driving. Whew. This is Kalle from foodie.fm. These were the guys who caused this to happen. They were the guys who said, yeah, we'll put a reasonable sum of money in, which will cover the ferry and some diesel. And then he found out that we were in the hole, and he said, oh, we can stretch a bit more and pay for a bit more diesel. So we took all of their stuff and allowed them to cover the side of the sauna with lots and lots of stickers and things. Antoine, amazing French guy. Remember back at the beginning of the story I said I was phoning all these people? One of the suggestions was, phone this mad French guy who came to the meetup last summer with his tent banya. He's sauna crazy. He was the second person to go in the sauna. I was the first, because there was nothing much else to do. It's, it's cold, it's wet, and there's no Wi-Fi. Uh, that's the description of the web. Um, so he was eating some lunch. I'd asked him, could you bring me some lunch? Being British, thinking he'll bring me a slightly curled up sandwich. Luckily, he's French, which meant we had bread and cheese and wine and grilled sausages and really quite fantastic food. Surprisingly, if you're at a conference and there's some people standing in swimming shorts, other people wander across and ask, why are you in swimming shorts? And then we explain about the idea that we have this sauna here, and it's come from Finland, and they go, it's a, what, what? How, how does it run? And you go, you put wood in the box and set fire, and it's hot, and huh? I, I've lived in Finland too long or something. If you ever do a road trip, apart from taking along your gaffer tape, or the, as we call it in Finland, years as day, Take some string. Um, this is how the mudguard stayed on the Land Rover for about 500 kilometers. Um, it was also how the back of the Land Rover got cleaned. <clears throat> we were still in the hole for a lot of money. So we put the sign on the back of the sound in the hope that startups would gather together and help support us. Mm, not so much luck. But I did see Leo Laporte. He's a fairly famous in tech circles. He's a blogger, has his own network, and he wasn't doing anything. I was talking with Antti Vilpanen from Arctic Startup. I said, look, nobody's talking to him. Actually, nobody's talking to him. So I walked across and said, hi, Leo, are you busy? No, not really. Would you like to come and look at our sauna that we brought from Helsinki? Uh, uh, what? Yes, the thing over there, the big red wooden box, that's a sauna from Helsinki. Oh, cool. Now, another thing that not many people realize is, there may only be five million Finns in the world, but it seems everyone in the world knows somebody from Finland. It's because Leo knew somebody, or his wife knew some Finnish person. They knew Sauna. He came in, and he stood around. He went, yes, I'll have to come to this later. Never did. But I guess he's kind of busy. It's a big media event, Le Web. But he did say, this is awesome. This is the most interesting thing I've seen. You'll have to come on our TV program. Come by the studio tomorrow at whatever it was, 1.30. And tell everyone about the fact that you've taken this ridiculous risk 
to bring this sauna here. So we did. Um, the one thing, because I hadn't actually got a LeWeb badge, I had to sort of sneak in pretending I was going to get some more water. I actually carried about 200 liters of water in 10 liter buckets. So that was, that was my exercise for the week. The Finns that were there on that second day, they had a little Etcot and introduced some French people to Finnish culture. Uh, it's Finlandia Vodka and uh, Olvi and Lonkaro, if you can't see. So, bringing culture, Finnish culture, to Paris. After Paris, head off after the conference. Number one tip if you're going to a big conference, uh, have a plan. Decide what you're going to do. Don't just rock up there and sit in the sauna. People won't come and meet you. You have to go out and pull them into the sauna. So I went up, visited a friend in Brussels, had some really nice beer. Next day to Amsterdam. This is NDSM. It's a disused shipyard, now taken over by some artists. And there's a little corner of it that's been given over to the geeks. They've got two porter cabins. And for this evening, they also had a portable sauna. So we had portable sauna, some old info kiosks, bricks, hay bales, bits of wood, all sorts of stuff, and lots of interesting conversations. The next morning, I discovered, like Sormann Lindner, the Dutch have tied up an old submarine for some random reason. I don't know. It's there. Um, so, back on the road. I'm on the road, up through northern Germany. I have to get to Copenhagen, but I can't make it in one go, so I need to stop at a hotel. So I pull over off the highway and look at the map on the phone and say, show me the hotels nearby. There's nothing just off the highway. The closest one is two or three kilometers off the highway, and I figure, looking at the map, there's another one a couple of kilometers up the road. So I pull off the highway, down a little road, down a smaller road. This is not looking good. The road is barely the width of the trailer. There's nowhere to turn around. Oh, my God, I hope this is a real hotel and not some B&B, because I'm never turning this around. Luckily, it was this really rather nice hotel. So look, young German lady runs out, says something to me in German. Sorry, do you speak English? Yes, yes. Uh, do you have rooms? Yes, we have rooms. Great. Minor problem when I jump out the landing to unhitch the trailer. The little front wheel that you used to lift the trailer when you unhitch it had fallen off somewhere in Germany. Oh, no. Luckily... The big black thing you see there, that's the jack for a Land Rover. So it's designed to lift the Land Rover up for changing wheels, so I figure it'll lift the trailer. And it did. Huzzah! So now I can unhitch the trailer from the Land Rover and stop blocking the car park. Into the hotel. And after I've checked in, dropped my bag in the room, and then I go and sit in the hotel lobby, I realize I'm the only guest. So not only did they certainly have rooms, I had a staff of five, which was nice. So the receptionist had nothing to do but look after me. The waiter had nothing to do but look after me. And all I wanted was a bowl of soup. This was the view from my balcony uh, the next morning. Tip, if you're ever traveling, have a look at the hotels. You can very often find really nice hotels for not much more than those concrete boxes we normally end up staying in. This was about the same price as any hotel. And I had my own balcony, looking out over the lake. Um, to the left of this picture, uh, well, my left, uh, actually, yeah, over there. Um, that's where they land the helicopters. This hotel is used in the summer by Germans who are getting wed because it's really, really pretty, as you saw from the, the entrance. Come on. My own personal breakfast buffet, which actually was, was better than most breakfast hotels I've ever had. But unfortunately, I had to get up quite early and once again spend the day on the highway going from North Germany to Copenhagen. I don't know if you, how many of you have actually 
tried to hitch a trailer to a car, but that little wheel is really useful because you get the car the right distance, then you sort of push the trailer. You can't do that when it's up on a jack. So it took quite a while of sort of, oh, no, there, yes, right, oh, damn, forward. Right, I've got to go across one centimeter so I can drop the trailer. Or really, really hard. Then to Copenhagen, to Sunstone Ventures, they're a venture, uh, venture capital firm, which basically means bankers. And there I am, once again, toddling around with buckets of water. And it was that point I realized my life had changed. Because to me, it was perfectly normal to take a sauna in the evening in a car park. For the guys from Sunstone and my friend Christopher who met us, oh, this is the craziest thing I've done all year. Uh, it's a sauna. And then I realized, yes, this was crazy, because we're in the center of Copenhagen, nearly causing people to fall off their bicycles. Because we're stood there in towels in December in a car park. Everyone you meet when you're driving around with a 1.7 ton trailer says, what? Why? What? what? Eh? We met these two guys in Sweden. They also had a Land Rover with a trailer on the back. They went, smoked their pipe a bit and said, mm-hmm. No reaction at all to the fact that we had a sauna, we'd been to Paris and back. It's something different when you start to drive Land Rovers. You, it becomes normal to do strange journeys. The final hotel of the tour, Nortelia. Again, we got lucky. The main hotel in the town was fully booked. So we couldn't stay there, and we ended up in this lovely old wooden building, um, which was much more interesting than a standard concrete block. One beer onto the ferry. Luckily, a flat crossing, final tank of fuel before the tour ends. The tour ended on the final day outside Venture Garage, where we had some entrepreneurs in there. Actually, no, they didn't, because they're all busy talking to the money men. But at least I got to have another sounder in a car park. And then to Nostri, where almost nobody used it. But hey, it was nice. It was a nice idea. So you'll be glad that's blurred. <coughs> Lessons learned. Take risks. As they say, the ice hockey guy says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Have a support team. I had a support team behind me. They were raising money the whole way, so we managed to just break even and rely on luck, but not too much. And do things because they sound like a good idea at the time. If you want to join us, travelingsalesman.mobi. Thank you. <laughs>